It's been many years since Amazon launched its first Fire TV media streaming device. Seven years to be precise. Since then, we've had multiple variants of the Fire TV box, the Fire TV stick, and now the Fire TV cube as well. Why am I taking you through this history lesson? Because despite having been in existence for so long, it's only now that I've had a chance to actually take a look at a Fire TV device thoroughly. And uh, you know what I'm going to be talking about, the Fire TV Q 2021 as a result. And I'm glad uh, because now I can go into this review without any preconceived notion. And as our YouTube star MKBHD puts it very succinctly, I have some thoughts. Well, my name is Ashad. you're watching My Smart Price, and this is our in-depth comprehensive review of the Fire TV Cube 2021 variant. And in this video, we are also going to be comparing it against the Apple TV 4K 2021, which can also serve as a review for that device. Let's get started. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever My Smart Price puts out an awesome new tech video because we're trying to get to 100k really soon and we need your support. Let's start with an odd omission. The Fire TV Cube's box doesn't contain an HDMI cable. The same is true for the Apple TV's box contents as well. Now I find it really odd that Apple and Amazon didn't find it necessary to actually bundle in a premium HDMI cable along with their very expensive uh, you know, media streaming devices. In fact, if you're actually buying this, I would suggest that you buy a premium HDMI cable with support for Chroma 4-2-2 upsampling so that you get the best quality 4K content. But with the Fire TV Cube, you do get an Alexa voice remote, an IR extender cable for uh, controlling your set-top box or any other piece of tech that makes use of infrared for communication, an Ethernet adapter and a power adapter. With the Apple TV, you get the new upgraded Siri remote, a Type-C to Lightning cable for charging the Siri remote and a power adapter. The Ethernet port is available on the Apple TV's body itself, so a separate attachment is not required. But yes, the addition of that infrared adapter so that you can control all your media devices in the entertainment center with one single remote is actually a very deft touch. More about that later. Now, Amazon wasn't kidding when it named the device Fire TV Cube. This black cube shaped structure uses glossy plastic on all the sides, except for the top and the bottom where you will find a matte finish. This glossy plastic design attracts a lot of dust and in my case, Misa's hair too. As for the ports, you get a micro USB port for the Ethernet adapter, the IR port, an HDMI port and the powered adapter port. There are a few buttons on the top for the volume control to switch off the mic and to wake Alexa. Plus, there's a strip of light that glows when you wake up for the Alexa command. The Apple TV 4K on the other hand is pretty threadbare in comparison. Not much to see apart from the big Apple logo up top and you know HDMI, Ethernet and power supply ports on the rear. The Fire TV Cube is pretty compact, but it is taller than the Apple TV 4K. In fact, both the boxes have a nondescript design that will undoubtedly fade away from your vision while watching television. Now, there's a reason why most media players are black in color. They don't want you to get distracted. The remote that you get with the Fire TV Cube is the third generation Alexa voice remote. It is a black color, all plastic unit that has every single button you would need. From a dedicated button to invoke the Alexa voice command to specific hotkeys for Prime Video, Netflix and Amazon Music, Amazon leaves no stone unturned. But the real magic is actually being able to control your TV with this remote. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the Alexa voice uh, remote to sync with the OnePlus TV U1 SS remote because it is a Bluetooth remote. You need a remote with infrared capabilities. For what it is worth, you can still use your TV remote to control the Fire TV Cube thanks to CEC support. But the reason why Alexa voice remote is so handy is because it can not only connect to your smart TV, but also to your media center, PlayStation, uh, set-top box and more. Essentially, if you manage to configure everything properly, it will work as a universal remote. In comparison, Apple's Siri remote has been upgraded now and I prefer the new design. The glass touchpad remote that Apple introduced with its first gen Apple TV was too slim. Plus, I know many including me have broken the glass touchpad of the remote. Anyway, this one is chunkier but not as much as the Fire TV Cube's remote. It is made entirely of aluminium and has dedicated buttons for a plethora of functions which includes mute, back, play, pause, power and you know a whole lot more on the front. 
The Siri button is placed on the right edge, but the head lighter is the circular D-pad that not only works as a clicky navigational tool, but also offers a touch surface to glide through the UI. Only Apple could have thought of such ingenious engineering solution to integrate two different interaction mechanisms on the same surface area. By the way, if you for some reason don't like the touchpad, you can switch it off from the menu. I quite like this new remote and feel that it's a very good upgrade. Now between the third generation Alexa voice remote and the Siri remote that you get with the Apple TV 4K, I think that the Siri remote is far more premium of course because of its metal build and it also gets a lot of the basic functions right. Now the Amazon remote also gets a lot of the basic functions right but most importantly it actually goes for the kill with its universal remote ambitions. Now it goes without saying that compared to a Fire TV stick, the Fire TV Cube is more powerful. It has a hexaco processor, 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage now. All this translates to super fast UI response and app load times. But the Apple TV 4K with its A12 Bionic chip is unbeatable when it comes to raw power inside a media player. The A12 Bionic also offers enough grunt for you to play the fantastic lineup of Apple Arcade games available for the Apple TV. I hooked up my PlayStation 4's DualShock 4 controller and continued my session of Wonderbox where I left off. Note that some games do work with the older touchpad based Apple TV remote, the current remote doesn't work with most games. To be able to play Sayonara Wild Hearts and Pathless alone is a huge win in my books and the Apple TV 4K is the only media streaming device that comes close to being somewhat of a budget gaming console and it offers you more storage than the Fire TV Cube for storing more games. Now if you've come this far and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even comment below because it doesn't cost you anything and it'll help the YouTube algorithm push this video to more people looking for such content and also help us grow. By the way, there are a few games available for the Fire TV Cube as well, but the catalog is super limited and I didn't feel like playing most of them compared to Apple Arcade's lineup. Now before I talk about the software, the built-in Alexa support is just so cool. Thanks to the 8 far-field microphones, the device could hear my voice over the TV's speaker and to be able to switch on and off the TV with voice never gets old. Moving on, Amazon has only recently completely revamped the layout. You now get a big banner on the top with a slideshow of content recommendations and very rarely some ads. I encountered a Loda ad and was immediately taken aback. I really do not want ads invading my TV experience. Below the banner you will find a strip that takes you to your profile, helps you find new shows from a preset list of categories and showcases the live events. Unfortunately live content doesn't include hot stuff for some reason. On the same strip you will find a set list of apps that is hard coded to 6 apps that you can tune to your liking. Below the strip is a seemingly endless list of horizontal carousels with recommendations. This is filled with mostly prime video recommendations. There are some hot star recommendations too that I found but I rarely found a Netflix show. Now this is why I don't prefer content based user interfaces that actually depend on an algorithm to provide you a customized content feed. In fact I feel that content discovery actually becomes more confusing after this. Which brings me to Apple TV OS. Undoubtedly, it might feel too simplistic to some, but at least it is immediately recognizable, especially if you've used an iPhone or an iPad. Visually, it has a top shelf that works like a banner to showcase content from the top five apps on the dock as managed by you. Below the shelf is a list of apps. You can put these apps in a folder if you like. I really like the dynamic live wallpapers too. They look absolutely stunning. Finally, long pressing the home button opens up the control center that lets you change the user profile, put all the devices to sleep, change the audio playback device and more. Plus, tvOS is the only TV UI that offers a recent step to switch between apps for handy multitasking. Now, undoubtedly, in my opinion, as far as TV operating systems go, I feel that tvOS has the most approachable user interface. Both the streaming boxes can do up to 4K 60fps video with support for Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos standards. But the Fire TV Cube definitely has an advantage with native HDR10 Plus support which is missing on the Apple TV 4K. This means content on Amazon Prime Video coded in HDR10 Plus such as Jack Ryan and Boyce does offer slightly better dynamic range performance on the Fire TV Cube. I say slightly because I could barely notice any difference in picture quality. By the way, full disclosure time, I actually tested both the streaming boxes on the OnePlus TV U1S which doesn't support Dolby Vision. Therefore, all Dolby Vision content played back at, you know, HDR10 format on both the devices. At least it maintained picture parity, so that would give me a comparison of the HDR performance. Which brings me to our first performance test between, uh, you know, a third party app which is Netflix. 
I really couldn't tell any difference in the HDR performance while testing our planet on Netflix. The same is true for SDR HD content as well. The digital processing is only ever so slightly better on the Apple TV 4K, but most people won't even notice a difference. In fact, I expected shows on the Apple TV Plus to look better on Apple TV 4K, but that wasn't really the case too. It looked equally good on the Fire TV Cube. Plus, the Apple TV 4K includes a really cool way to color calibrate your display using an iPhone. While I'm not saying it offers the most accurate colors, the balanced color tuning which happens on the device itself and not actually on the TV, my TV settings don't change. They look actually really good uh, with fantastic facial tones without any red bias, which the Fire TV could not match sometimes. Colors in general are better on the Apple TV 4K compared to the Fire TV Cube, but this is not some extensive test. In fact, I would suggest that you go over and check the picture quality performance at, you know, HD test, which is one of my favorite channels. I'll link it up right now. Uh, having said that, the difference between the Apple TV 4K and the Fire TV Cube is something that most people won't really notice. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to switch on the match content frame rate and match dynamic image content setting on Apple TV 4K. And if you buy the Fire TV Cube, change the setting from HDR always on to adaptive. It will help ensure that SDR content is not upscaled to HDR unnecessarily as it tends to look bad, especially in the UI like the Fire TV Cube does. Now to absolutely want to buy the Fire TV Cube, you have to do some deep thinking because it is expensive at Rs. 12,999, which is a good Rs. 7,000 more than the sticker price of the Fire TV Stick, which is 5,999. So what does it actually offer over the Fire TV Stick? So firstly, we do get a faster processor, slightly better RAM and more storage, which helps keep running the UI pretty fast and smooth and also does help a little bit with gaming. But most importantly, it comes with built-in, you know, echo support, which allows for hands-free Alexa commands, which could be definitely something that, you know, attracts a lot of buyers. But that's about it. With the Fire TV Stick 4K, you get a compact form factor that actually gets hidden behind the back of your TV on your HDMI port. And when you're looking at the visual fidelity, you get support for all the formats, which includes Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. So with respect to you know, picture quality, you're not going to lose out on much either. And uh, you know, if you actually want the hands-free Alexa support, then you can buy the fourth generation Echo and still have 3000 rupees saved so yeah which definitely shows you that the fire tv cube is an expensive proposition but you know what if you're talking about expensive propositions the apple tv 4k that i've been testing alongside the fire tv cube actually costs rupees 6000 more but it does have a few interesting additions for example the 812 bionic is a very powerful chip and the apple arcade support with the games that you get actually make it a fairly competent gaming console in my opinion and uh, you know apart from that you also do get slightly better picture quality and most importantly tvOS is possibly the best operating system that I have seen on a TV and of course it also doesn't come with any ads and this is very little tiny tiny thing which I sort of uh, you know care about a lot is the fact that you get support for Apple Music which is not available on the Fire TV Cube because I am completely on the Apple Music ecosystem so you know that matters to me a lot. Having said that the Fire TV Cube does have its own advantages with the HDR10 Plus support and of course the inbuilt echo support all said and done i'm leaning towards the apple tv 4k and i consider it to be the best media streaming device that is available in the market right now but let it be known that i am entrenched in the ecosystem and i'm also cognizant of the fact that that is a very expensive streaming device and if you want to save some money then the fire tv cube actually does get a lot of things right having said that we must agree that you know the fire tv cube is undone by its very own sibling the fire tv stick 4k which offers far better value and i think that amazon is also aware of this fact so what do you guys think of this detailed review and comparison to let me know in the comment section below i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you like these kind of videos don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even comment below so this algorithm can push this video to more people until next time this is ashar from my smart price signing off goodbye and godspeed my friends